On this episode of the Globe News Report, we take an inside look at how the renovations of the West Lawn Dining Hall are coming along. Goshen College students reflect on the termination of a former professor of music. And I sit down with Anna Groff to discuss an annual speech contest that is right around the corner. All that and more on the Globe News Report. Welcome to this week's edition of the Globe News Report. My name is Colin Eccles. And I'm Alyssa McDonald. We've got a great show slated ahead. Goshen College's West Lawn Dining Hall has been closed for renovations since August, with plans to house all new classrooms and facilities for the nursing program. In those five months, significant progress has been made and things now appear to be ahead of schedule. Lily Herrera has more details on those renovations. The ground was broken for the Westlawn expansion project on the campus of Goshen College back in September. Now they have moved inside to continue hammering away at their plans for further construction. After the harsh weathers of the winter season rolled through Goshen, the further expansion moved inside the Westlawn building. Even if it seems the construction has been put to a halt, Director of Facilities Brian Mast says there has been a significant amount of progress. It's gone really well. As you can see, there's a lot of progress that's been made uh, here on the third floor. Um, of course, it's a renovation of a 70-year-old building, and so there have been some surprises along the way, things that we've found that we weren't expecting, and we've had to problem solve along the way to keep the pro progress rolling. Though they have made advancements on the indoor developments, Superintendent at DJ Construction, Lon Roth, says the expansion has faced its challenges and issues along the way. Oh, old, old building, lots of unforeseen stuff when we open it up and but hopefully we're about done with that part. <laughs> Even with the problems they faced while tearing the building apart, the plans for the West Lawn building are set to finish later this year. So uh, the completion date is currently October, mid-October, so October 15, I think. Um, and we're hoping that we can get the first floor of the kitchen and the dining hall done sooner than that. We're trying to shoot for August so that students can be back eating on the first floor while they're kind of finishing up the details on the second and third floor. The end date set for mid-October gives a broad timeline of when to expect the finished building, but a project this size calls for all hands on deck. There's lots of team members here. Um, l and Electric is doing electric. H&G is here doing mechanical and plumbing. Uh, we have all, lot, lots, of, lots of team players. The multiple teams helping with the construction has made the expansion move along smoothly and has made Mass look forward to the end of this project. Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I'm tremendously excited to um, have a project this large on campus and um, what it will do for students, um, not only our nursing program, allow those to expand and also just have a fantastic education. I mean, this will be a state-of-the-art facility. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Lily Herrera. The project was originally scheduled to be finished in spring of 2025, so us students are glad to hear that things are moving smoothly and quickly. As much as I'll miss eating at the Union Building here at campus, I am very excited to see what the new dining hall and what the new West Lawn Building will look like when it's done. When we return, our new staff breaks down a recent controversy on the campus of Goshen College. Stay with us. You're watching the Globe News Report. So you just graduated from Ocean College. What experiences prepared you for this job? Where do I begin? Over the past
past week, Goshen College parted ways with a professor over a series of allegations stemming from a recent article posted by the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Seth Smith Kaufman has more details about the situation. Goshen College Associate Professor of Music Dr. Richard Brunson was officially fired from Goshen College on Monday, February 12th. The administrative move comes one week to the day after the Goshen College campus was first made aware of an article posted in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel about Dr. Brunson. This article detailed numerous accusations against Dr. Brunson about alleged instances of sexual harassment and inappropriate behavior in relation to students while working as a music professor at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. Tuesday, February 6th, the Goshen College Human Resources Department sent an email to the student body in response to the accusations, placing Dr. Brunson on leave, a move Goshen College President Rebecca Stoltzfu says was one that needed to be made swiftly. Our immediate action was to put him on administrative leave while we determined what the best um, course of action was for Goshen College campus and with legal counsel around that. And this morning we came to the clear decision that our best course was to terminate Dr. Brunson's employment at Goshen College immediately. Dr. Brunson's alleged inappropriate behavior documented through private message chains and in graphic detail. Students across campus shocked to learn about the allegations expressed a wide range of emotions in response. Mainly just felt anger and also just feeling disgusted by the whole thing. Immediate thing was shock. Yeah, it was the type of thing where it seems like, could this re really be real? Students who learned under Dr. Brunson now reflecting and dissecting the interactions they had with him since his hiring in the fall. He did follow people on social media. The only thing that I thought was inappropriate was that he requested to follow me on Instagram like 10 times when I kept declining the thing. It was just like constant, like, I want to follow you and stuff. So I do see them differently because in the article that we read, it said that he would connect to his students back then through social media or through email. Dr. Brunson's termination puts the Goshen College Orchestra in a difficult position with their Concerto Aria concert set to happen this week. Students doing their best now to take a positive attitude into the coming week. We're feeling really hopeful. Brian Mass just stepping up again and just our connection of music and how we all love making music with each other is also the same thing that's keeping us so passionate of wanting to still be able to do it. Like we are the orchestra, we make the music regardless of whoever's conducting. Ultimately, I am experiencing a lot of hope. He wasn't the right fit. Knowing that there's someone out there that could be the right fit, finding that person is exciting. The hiring of Dr. Brunson has raised questions on the specifics of the Goshen College hiring policy. Goshen College says they went through standard background checks and protocols, but since the investigation into Dr. Brunson's behavior at the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point was internal, no criminal records of alleged inappropriate behavior existed and were not shared with the college. That was information that was not revealed to us through our, through his references or through the background check that we do for all employees. You know, after any sort of adverse circumstance or crisis, what we are committed to do is examining the processes to say, how could this have been prevented? But also, how can we respond even better the next time? In a statement to the Goshen College record, Dr. Brunson's lawyer, Michael Brown, said, quote, Dr. Brunson, knowing he has done wrong, nonetheless prays and asks for patience, grace, and an opportunity to be heard. Reporting for Globe News, I'm Seth Smith-Kaufman. Thanks to Seth for the report. With the initial news more than one week behind us, the Goshen College campus can start to move forward and heal. That's right, and they can do that through the help of the Goshen College Prevention Intervention Network, which has met with students since the release of the initial article to listen, learn, and provide help in any way that they can. Yeah, Penn is talking about doing some listening sessions um, and also highlighting resources, um, working throughout especially the month um, of February, but moving forward, making sure that resources are more widely known um, and available to students across campus. Any student who feels like they need to reach out to PIN can do so at the email on your screen. The annual C. Henry Smith Peace Oratorical Contest is next week on Tuesday the 20th. Alyssa will sit down with Anna Groff, who directs the contest. That's next on the Globe News Report. I came to Goshen thinking that I'd just be acting, but over the course of my four years, I've taken part in all the other 
facets of theater, and I think that's helped me gain a wider appreciation for theater as a whole. I mean, it takes all those things that I'm interested in, like design aspects of theater, the environmental studies course I took, and it takes my music major, and it just focuses it all into theater. Welcome back to the Globe News Report. I now have a very special guest in the studio who plays an instrumental role behind the scenes of the C. Henry Smith Peace Oratorical Contest. It's Goshen College's very own Anna Groff. Anna, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. How are you doing? Great, thank you. And to kick things off, the contest is less than a week away. So can you give us a little bit of history and sort of background uh, about the contest itself? Sure. Um, this year, we had the auditions in mid-January and then selected the five finalists from that point. So they have been working with a mentor. They received written feedback on their scripts from folks in the comm department. They viewed winning speeches from past years. They All of them met with a speech coach yesterday on humble stage. So they have been hard at work polishing their scripts, uh, practicing the delivery, and yeah, making content tweaks. In terms of broader history for the contest, the very first <clears throat> intercollegiate peace speech contest here on campus was back in 1907. So it's been going on for a long time. This year is the 50 year anniversary of the C. Henry Smith Family Trust Fund sponsoring the contest. So in light of that, they decided to increase prize amounts for this year, so a one-time prize money increase. So the first place winner last year received $300. This year they receive 1000 So we are excited and that elevates the excitement surrounding this event, which is, yeah, coming right up. And you are very involved in the contest behind the scenes. So can you tell me a yeah. little bit about your role uh, specifically? This is my third year serving as director of the C. Henry Smith Peace uh, Oratorical Contest. Um, yeah, lots of behind the scenes work with getting promotion out about the contest, make sure that as many people on campus and off campus can attend, working with the finalists, working with the judges and the speech coach and folks over at Humble, we could not do it without um, all their hard work in preparation and that night. Um, I will also introduce the finalists and the judges that evening and then I have the honor of announcing the winners, uh, the winner and the runner up. So. Yeah, it's a really fun night. After the five speeches, we have a break and a reception in the Yost room. People hang out and wait for the judges to finish their deliberations. And the judges come back in, hand me a piece of paper, and I get to go back up on stage and read those names and congratulate those winners. Yeah, and there are just a few uh, contestants each year. So how difficult is it uh, to narrow it down to just a couple uh, people that are actually going to present their speeches? It depends on the year. Um, some years there's a larger pool that auditions and other years it's smaller but um, yeah it's always it's always a tough call because there's so many talented students here at GC. And speaking of those competitors uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, each competitor this year uh, and sort of what their speech topic uh, is going to be about? Sure. Um, so Mariella Esparza is talking about children as the as an oppressed class. Tyson Miller is using journalism as a tool for peace. Um, Cassidy Sewertnia is talking about communication barriers and ASL interpretation more specifically. Um, Sarah Lopez Ramirez is talking about the ITIN number um, and immigration. And who's my fifth? Annika Alderfer Fisher is talking about overconsumption and inequity. And the night of the actual contest, I'm sure, like you said, there's a lot of deliberation that goes into this with the judges. So what kind of things uh, are these students being judged on uh, the night of? There's a rubric that the judges follow, which is a little bit like oral communication in that they look at the content and what the words um, that are said, the, the kind of research and stories and anecdotes, and then also the delivery. So the eye contact, audience connection, gestures and movement. Um, and then also, how does it fit with the theme in terms of the peace theme? But it isn't just peace. It's speaking to modern day injustices, uh, social justice topics, and things connected to how do we make the world a better place and a more peaceful place. 
And after the contest uh, is done here on the campus of Goshen College, uh, they actually have an opportunity to move on. Uh, the winner does. So you can uh, can you tell me a little bit about like the process of you know what happens to the winner uh, after they're selected here on campus? Yes, and exciting enough, um, last year Jakira Green won here at Goshen College for her speech, "The Privilege of Peace." She went on to compete in the Mennonite Central Committee binational contest and won first there. So there's five or six schools in the binational contest. The winner from each of those schools goes on to the larger binational contest. And uh, usually it's really packed the night of the competition. I've yes. been a handful of years and Humble is always full of people. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about what it's like, you know, for you as the director, you know, seeing the turnout of student body, community members and professors alike joining together to listen to these students? Well, I think it's a favorite night on campus for a lot of people, um, in particular, the friends and family of the finalists. So it's just really fun to meet um, parents and siblings of those finalists. Um, during the reception time and afterwards. And then loads of students come out to, yeah, support their friends. And um, I'm asking two of my three classes to be there and to be doing a little homework involved with actively listening to the speeches and um, thinking about the content and delivery of the finalists. So it also serves as a really important um, education tool for others that are thinking about public speaking. Um, and it might inspire a student to try out for the next year. And I've already had a couple students ask me, is it too late to join this year? I said, yes, it's too late to join this year, but you could do it next year. And what would you want to say to any competitors that are watching or anyone in the community who's thinking about going, but maybe uh, is a little hesitant or doesn't really know uh, if they do want to come or not yet? Oh, please do. Um, it starts at seven. Get there a little bit early to get a good seat, although Humble has all seats are good seats, and they just there's new um, chairs and carpet, so it's a really beautiful space now. The chairs are very comfortable and a nice shade of purple. Um, between my comments, the five speeches, and my closing remarks, it'll be around an hour. Then we'll take a break and then have the announcement of the winner. So the night goes pretty fast, and there's a lot of fun suspense kind of built into it. And my last question, I just have to ask, uh, if you can say, who do you think uh, is going to win since you're not part of the judgment process? If you can say. I cannot say. <laughs> I think they are all winners. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Anna, for coming to talk about the contest uh, and have this chat with me. The C. Henry Smith Peace Oratorical Contest will be held in the Humboldt Center on the campus of Goshen College on Tuesday, February 20th at 7 p.m. Best of luck to all the competitors this year. Heading your way, Dante Stanton joins us in the studio to talk about local news. And of course, we'll go over your community calendar. This is the Globe News Report. Goshen students enjoy an amazing record of success. What's the secret? It starts with hands-on learning experiences. Whether it's a service project in Peru, a sustainability semester at our environmental learning center, or broadcasting for our award-winning radio station. It adds up to life-changing perspectives and real-world skill development that makes a difference to future employers. And it's all available at a campus that makes everyone feel at home. Come hang out with us and see for yourself. Schedule your campus visit today at goshen.edu slash visit. Welcome back to the Globe News Report. We've got Globe News reporter Dante Stanton in the studio now. Dante, local news is more important than ever, so take us through what's been happening here in Goshen. Thanks, Colin. We'll start with a quick reminder. All stories presented during the Week in Review are originally reported by the Goshen News and rewritten for this video format. Let's start here in Goshen as Goshen High School Principal Kathy DeMeyer announced Monday night that the school is set to partner with the Goshen Fire Department to bring a fire and EMT training program to the Pathways Hub at Chandler Elementary. The two-year program will allow students to earn transferable credits towards an associate's degree in fire science. Those who participate will even lead the program fully certified in emergency medical training and fire science. DeMeyer noted that there will be no additional purchases necessary for the program as the Goshen Fire Department already has all the necessary training equipment. The first class of students eligible for this training will begin at the start of the 2024-2025 school year. And a new option for senior living has opened its doors in Goshen. Green Oaks of Goshen held its ribbon cutting one week ago today, creating a new option for low-income elderly adults in the area. The community is based on private apartments and a residential-style environment and is meant for residents who wouldn't require around-the-clock care. Construction for the project took around two years to complete, 
And so far, 47 of the 120 apartments available are occupied. Globe News is set to follow up on this story independently to learn more about how the new community can benefit in the long run. That's it for this episode's edition of the Week in Review. Colin, Alyssa, back to you. Now it's time for the community calendar, so let's take a look at what's going on exactly in this next week. Martha Redbone and the American Patchwork Quartet will be at Souter Concert Hall Friday, February 16th, starting at 7.30. Their soulful and captivating music celebrates the rich cultural tapestry of America. The group weaves together jazz refinement, country twang, West African hypnotics, and East Asian ornaments to create their musical patchwork. More information about tickets can be found online at goshen.universitytickets.com. If you didn't get out because of the kids on Valentine's Day, here's your chance. This weekend, Ghost Martial Arts is hosting a parents' night out. From 5 to 8 p.m., Ghost will host children ages 5 to 15. They will have an obstacle course, snacks, dodgeball, and more. Info at ghxstmartialarts.com. If you've ever wondered what it feels like to race sled dogs, your question will soon be answered. Musher Karen will be at Goshen Public Library next Thursday, February 22nd to answer all your questions. She will also be bringing her Alaskan Husky noggin to the library at 630. The event is open to all ages and no signups are required. And finally, a new musical is coming to the Goshen Theater. Tuck Everlasting will be presented by Phoenix Performing Arts in the Miller Auditorium. Shows will take place February 23rd and 24th at 7.30 with a final showing on the 25th at 3 p.m. Information about the tickets and the synopsis for the show is available online at goshentheater.org. That's going to do it for this episode of the Globe News Report. Make sure to follow the Globe on all of our social media accounts, Facebook, the X app, and YouTube at 911 The Globe. And don't forget to download the Globe radio app. Join us next week for the Globe Sports Corner and in another two weeks for another rendition of the Globe News Report. I'm Alyssa McDonald. And I'm Colin Eccles. Thanks for watching. Because you're here.